After you've got your flower and your insects transferred, then you need to go over with a dark, either a black colored pencil, or you can use a Sharpie marker. But you wanna make sure it's not a watercolor pencil and darken in all of your lines. Once you've got all of your lines darkened in with your pencil, which should be like a black water, or I'm sorry, a black colored pencil, or you can use a Sharpie marker. I would use a thin tip Sharpie marker on that. Then you're going to add your color. Now the colors we're going to use are watercolor pencils, and we're going to use analogous colors. Analogous colors are next to each other on the color wheel. There's a chart in your Elements of Art, as well as above, next to, above the sink next to the color wheel, the analogous color chart. Yellow, yellow, green, and green are analogous colors. Yellow, yellow, orange, and orange, analogous colors. But I could not use orange and green in the same shape because those are not analogous colors. Yellow, orange, orange, and red, orange blend well together. Red, red, orange, and orange. Brown, yellow, orange, and red could be used with those as well. I'm going to stick to warm colors and cool colors together. Red, red, violet, and violet. Red, violet, violet, blue, violet. Violet, blue, violet, and blue. Blue, blue, green, green, and yellow, green, green and blue green blend well together. If you're using black, then blue works well with black. Now colors that are next to each other on the color wheel like yellow orange and green or yellow green, yellow orange and yellow green do not blend well together. You need to use colors that are not only next to each other but blend well together. Now your colors your watercolor pencils come in this container, and you no need to notice when you get them that all of the dark blues are, or all of the dark greens are together, all of the light greens, all the purples, all the colors are next to each other. There should not be an empty hole in your box, and you need to make sure that when you turn them in that they look like that as well. So for my B, I'm going to use yellow and orange and I think I'll put a little bit of red in there. Those are three colors that blend well. Those are analogous colors. Now I'm not going to color in the entire B. I'm going to use on each shape, I'm going to use each of those colors. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of red, then a little bit of orange, making directional lines. If it's a round form, then I want to use curved lines, and then the yellow in the middle. I'm going to do the same thing on the, the booty. I'm not coloring in the entire thing. I'm just laying down lines and I'll blend those together with my paintbrush. I see an area where I left out some black lines. I need to make sure I get all of those in there before I start to color. Now for the wings, I'm going to use yellow and orange, and I'm just going to go over the lines that I just drew. Not shading in the entire thing. Do not color in the entire thing. And then I'm going to put just a little bit of orange in there. Not much. And then for my legs, I think I want my legs to be black. So I'm going to use my black colored pencil. If you use the black, if you want the black to be solid black, then you do, this is the exception, you do need to shade that in a little bit. And if I use black, I want the black on the eyeballs too. Then I'm going to take a paintbrush with just water. 
and I'm going to blend these colors in. You want to be careful not to pick your paper up because it'll, the colors will, will bleed, will run on you. Now if I don't want too much red in my yellow, then I need to rinse out my brush in between each color. I'm going to blend in my wings. You don't need too much color. Don't need too much colored pencil on there unless you're doing the black and you want it to be black. What you don't want to do with the black is shade in an entire piece black. You need to have some color in there. And there is my bug. For my next piece, I'm going to use yellow. I'm going to do the leaves. I'm going to use yellow and light green and dark green. Again, I am not going to color in the entire thing. Whoopsie. I'm not going to color in the entire thing. I just want to go over the edges, maybe put some lines in there. I want to think about using this for lines and textures. And then as I brush this water on, it will saturate the area with color, but it will it should also leave some of those textures and lines in there. So you, when you brush your, your water on, you don't want to brush it so much that all the colors blend completely. You can see that I still have yellow and red and orange showing there. I'm gonna come in with my yellow and through here, in between those colors, in between the green lines. Make sure my brush is rinsed out. I don't want orange in there. And I'm going to go over those lines. This is not watercolor paper, so you can't go over this multiple times until it's dry. If, if you decide that you want more color in an area, you can wait for it to dry and then come back later and add more color. Now, I don't really want this stem to be any wider, so I'm not going to add any water on that. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Now for my stem, my stem I want I want my stem to be brown. But I also want to include a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to go across the outline of my stem. I'm just going to go on one side of that stem. I'm not going to do both sides in brown. And then my, my orange, I'm going to come in with a few curved lines because this is a round form, so I want it to round out a little bit. I also need to be careful if I've got warm and cool colors right next to each other, I want to wait for one of those to dry before I add water to the next color so I don't blend those together. Notice how my pencils are breaking. Pencils break because they get dropped on the floor or you tap them on the table. The lead inside your pencil, if you've ever tried to sharpen a pencil and the lead keeps coming out and coming out and coming out, that's because the lead is broken on the inside. So be careful not to drop these pencils on the floor. I want to not totally cover up my yellow, so I'm just going to do a, a line down the center here. I'm not going to go back and forth too much with that paintbrush because I want to make sure that I have yellow, brown, and orange showing. And then my rose. Now I have to decide what color I want my rose. Now if you want a blue rose, that's fine, but it needs to tie into your symbolism. A yellow rose symbolizes friendship, a red rose symbolizes love, so I'm going to make it a red rose. And I want it to have a little bit of a purple undertone. So I'm going to use red and violet. And where it blends together, it's going to make a red violet. Be careful that you don't, that you're paying attention so that you don't color your leaves in the color of your flower. I'm not coloring in my entire flower. I'm just going over the edges. And then I'm going to add a little bit of purple. 
little violet. I see a spot where I didn't connect to make a shape. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of violet and then I'm going to blend those together. And I think I'd like a little bit more red in there. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to go ahead and, and paint this and then I'm going to wait for it to dry probably the next day if I've got time. And then I will add maybe a little bit more red in there. And if you're not sure what colors you want to mix, you can take a scratch piece of paper and try it out. So let's review our color combinations. If you need brown, if you're using brown, warm colors go well with brown. Red, orange, and yellow work well with the brown. If you're using orange, you could go orange, yellow, and red. Or you could do orange and yellow or orange and red. For red, you could go the warm side and you could go orange and red and you'd have red orange in the middle. Of course you could use yellow with that too. Or you could go more of the cool side and make red and violet which would make red violet. For violet, of course it could be the red, it could also be violet and blue. So you'd have violet, blue, and blue-violet when it mixed together. Greens, we've got a light green and a dark green, and yellow. Those work well. You could also do the light green, the dark green, and a blue if you wanted a darker color. You cannot use red and green together. Those are complementary colors. You cannot use red and green in the same shape. Now I have green on my leaves, I've got red on my flower, and I've got warm red, orange, and brown on my stem. That's cool, you can do that, but you cannot mix them in the same shape. Okay, have fun. Don't, refer, don't forget to refer to the color chart next to the color wheel.